We're talking here about hermeneutics, which is the technical jargon word for interpretation. How do you interpret the Bible? We're going to get to our point, and our point has to do with the supersessionist that is the replacement reading of the Bible, where people read the Bible and they don't see a future for Israel and the church, versus a reading of the Bible that does. So the question for us right now is how do you, how do you evaluate uh, global comprehensive interpretation schemes? First of all, <clears throat> they have to be comprehensive, which means that the strength of the interpretation is whether it covers all of the data. Secondly, it has to be congruent. It doesn't have to just relate to all the Scripture, but it has to actually fit. It has to be consistent. In other words, it produces an interpretation that's not in conflict or contradictory statements. And it has to be coherent. That is, it has to make sense. Now, what I want to suggest to you is that a supersessionist interpretation of Scripture is not comprehensive, congruent, consistent, or coherent. We're talking about speech acts from God in which a promise is made. And not only is a promise made, but conventions are followed in order to, to enforce the point. So Abraham and and Genesis 15 says, how shall I know that I will inherit it? When he says, I will give your descendants this land. So God makes a covenant with a ceremony, a very ancient ceremony where God alone passes through the covenant pieces of the sacrifice and takes an obligation on himself alone. This is the way you will know. The integrity of God is at stake here and the power of God. And we can't say that we believe that the Bible is true, but then the promises that were made with all these formal conventions so that you will know <laughs> that this is so are just shadows that pass away. Spiritual isn't the dissolution of the material. It's the indwelling of the material. Like the theophany of God at the burning bush. It didn't consume the bush. And when God comes to indwell us bodily, He doesn't dissolve our bodies. And in the plan of God for the future kingdom, the thing that holds the kingdom together is the Spirit. That produces the shalom, which is prophesied everywhere. So when we see in the, this inaugural form of the kingdom, Jews and Gentiles in Jesus, having the Spirit and being able to relate to one another in peace, this is not a contrary story. This is a step toward the fulfillment of the whole plan of God, in which the kingdom of God with nations, Israel and Gentiles, composed of individual persons, Jews and Gentiles, are united by the Spirit under the rulership of one Jesus Yeshua, Son of David.